Hello everyone and thanks for watching Edupedia World Videos. In this chapter we are going to have a look at the public debt and budget. For that we are going to talk about the public debt and budget, the objectives for public debt, then we are going to focus on the reported sources, the classification, the redemption and the methods of repayment of public debts. So let's get started. Among the non-tax sources, the major source of revenue of the government is public debt, that is borrowing. It may either be internal or external debts. When the government raises revenue by borrowing from within the country, it is called internal debt. Similarly, if the government is borrowing from the rest of the world, it is a case of external debt. According to Philip Taylor, the debt is the form of promises by the Treasury to pay to the holders of these promises a principal sum and, in most instances, interest on the principal. Borrowing is restored, resorted to provide funds for financing a current deficit. Till the beginning of the 20th century, state performed only very limited functions maintenance of law and order, protection of the country from external attack, etc. Therefore, the state had to collect only small revenue and little debt. Recently, in almost all countries of the world, there has been a great increase in the magnitude and variety of governmental activities. The acceptance of the principle of the welfare state increases the role of state participation in economic activity. This has necessitated the need to find out additional sources of finance. Hence, modern governments have come to rely on public borrowings. The objectives of public debt are the following. 1. To bridge budget deficit or deficit financing. To fight against depression. To check inflation. To finance economic development. To meet unforeseen contingencies and an alternate source of income when taxable tax capacity is reached. Besides, the other objectives are for public debt are as follows, to finance wars, to finance public enterprises, to carry out welfare programs, to create infrastructure, for creation of productive assets and creation of essential non-income yielding assets that is, provision of public goods, etc. Now, what are the important sources of public debt? Every government has two major sources of borrowing, internal and external. Internally, the government can borrow from individuals, financial institutions, commercial banks and from the central bank. Externally, the governments borrow from individuals and banks, international institutions like the IBRD, the IMF, the African Development Bank, etc. and from foreign governments. They can be briefly summarized as follows. Borrowing from individuals, borrowing from non-banking financial institutions such as the insurance companies, investment trusts, mutual funds, etc. Borrowing from commercial banks, borrowing from central banks, and borrowing from external sources such as the IMF, the IBRD, the African Development Bank, foreign governments or countries. What about the classification of public debt? 1. We have the voluntary and compulsory on the basis of legal enhancement. Voluntary debt is the debt which is paid an illegal enforcement. Whereas compulsory debt is legally forced in nature. Here, people have to no option but repay the debt. 2. Funded and unfunded debt or provision for repayment. Funded debt is long-term or definite period debt. A proper agreement and terms and conditions of repayment with a percentage of interest payable are declared. They are used for creation of permanent assets. Unfunded debt is for a short term and for indefinite period. It is paid 
through the income received from other sources. These are used for meeting current needs. 3. Internal and external debt. When the government raises revenue by borrowing from within the country, it is called internal debt. Whereas, if the government is borrowing from the rest of the world, it is case of external debt. 4. Productive and unproductive purpose of loans. Loans on projects yielding income, construction of plants, railways, power schemes, etc. are called productive debt. Loans on, lo on loan, non-income yielding projects are called unproductive loans, such as war, famine, relief, etc. 5. Redeemable and irredeemable loans. Promise to repay. Redeemable debts refers to the loan which the government promises to pay off at some future debt. Principal, of course, plus interest. Irredeemable debts are those principal amount of which are never returned by the government but pays interest regularly. 6. Short, medium and long-term loans. And here we are going to focus on the time duration. Indeed, short-term loans are usually incurred for a period varying from three months to one year. Usually, governments get such loans from the central bank by using treasury bills. These loans are called ways and means of advances. Medium-term loans are those which are obtained for more than one year but less than ten years. And long-term loans are those which are obtained for more than ten years. These are used to finance development activities. Here we can give the example of the line of credits given by the European Investment Bank. Let's talk about, about the redemption of public debt. Redemption of public debt means repayment of a loan and it is an important responsibility of the government. All government loans should be repaid promptly. It is therefore necessary that the provision of repayment should be inherent in the scheme itself. Let's see the advantages of debt redemption. Well, it saves the government from going into bankruptcy. It checks extravagance on the part of the government. It preserves the confidence of the lenders and it makes easy for the government to float future loans. Moreover, it reduces the cost of management of public debt. The, it saves the future generations from the pressure of public debt. The resources obtained after redemption of the debt would be diverted towards private investments and therefore a favorable climate for investment could be created and redemption of debt may act as a useful tool to curb deflation. What about the methods of repayment of debt? First of all, we have the repudiation. It means refusal to pay a debt by governments. This method was followed by the USA after the Civil War and by the USSR after the 1917 revolution. This method is undesirable, of course, and has not been used recently anywhere in the world. Repudiation shakes the confidence of the people in public debt and many provoke retaliation from creditor countries. Two, we have the refunding. Refunding is the process of replacing maturity securities with new securities. In some cases, the bonds may be redeemed before the maturing date when the government intends to rearrange the maturity of outstanding debts or when current rate of interest is low. Generally, short-term borrowings are made in anticipation of tax collections for meeting current expenditure. However, excessive burden of new expenditure does not permit the retirement of the debt by means of revenue newly raised or by means of long-term borrowing. Thus, there is necessity of refunding the loans by all lenders and renewing the loans at lower rate of interest for future period. The drawback of this method is that government is tempted to postpone its obligation of debt redemption. 
This leads to a continuous increase in the burden of public debt in future. Now let's talk about the conversion of loans. In fact, it is a special type of refunding. Conversion of existing securities into new securities before maturity. It is generally resorted to reduce the burden of debt by converting high interest loans into low interest loans. According to Professor Dalton, the co conversion does not reduce the burden of public debt on the state because reduction in interest rates reduces the ability of the creditors to pay taxes which may mean loss of income to the government, thereby reducing its capacity to repay loans. Sinking Fund Sinking Fund is a special fund created for the repayment of public debt too. There is a theoretical justification for creating this fund because it imposes a requirement on the government to pay the old debts regularly. According to this method, the government sets aside a certain amount out of the budget every year for this fund. The balances in the funds are also invested and the interest occurring on them is also credited in the fund. Sinking fund is of two types. Certain sinking fund, here the governments, credit a fixed sum of money annually and uncertain sinking fund, and here the amount is credited when government secures a surplus in the budget. The one danger of this method is that the government may not wait till the end of the period of maturity and utilize the fund for some other purpose than the one for which the fund was created originally. The practice of sinking funds inspires confidence among the lenders and the enhancement of the credit worthiness of governments. Capital levy Capital levy is a special type of once-for-all tax on capital imposed to repay war debts. Capital, all capital goods are taxed above a minimum level of assets possessed by residents of the country simply capital levy refers to a very heavy tax on property and wealth. This tax was levied immediately after the First World War. This method has been advocated by economists like David Ricardo, Pigo and Dalton. Professor Dalton here has suggested that capital levy as a method of debt redemption with least real burden on the society and it is useful on account of its deflationary character. As for the surplus budget, quite often surplus budget may be used to clear public debt, but in recent times, due to the ever increasing public expenditure, surplus budget is a rare phenomenon. Finally, the buying up of loans. Government redeems debt through uh, buying up loans from the market. Well, this is the end of this video. In the next video, we are going to talk about the budget. Thank you very much for your attention.